Now we are going to look at the functional architecture of NGN that implements resource and admission control. The RSCF or resource and admission control functions are basically a suite of services offered through certain functional elements. So we would look at the need of RSCF. In fact, we are somewhat familiar with it. Once we looked at the NGN functional architecture, um, we, we did look at it. But now we are going to go a little deeper into it. And then we are going to look at the requirements uh, from the ITUT for implementing RSCF in order to provide certain services to the user. So RSCF is basically somewhat kind of an arbitrator or an intermediary between the service stratum and the transport stratum. So it means it interacts with the service control functions and the transport functions. The RSCF gets invoked, I mean it, it gets activated uh, to implement policy decisions on the basis of certain criteria. These criteria are definitely related to the um, entertaining or uh, handling of a user request to get a certain service. This is going to be based on a variety of factors. For instance, the service level agreement, the rules which are defined by the network for uh, policy. Uh, then what type of quality of service uh, classes are there and is the network able to implement QoS differentiation. Um, an example can be, uh, for example, uh, there are certain priorities which are given to voice, video, interactive and certainly best effort. So is this network that we are considering with RSCF um, service or module in it going to offer uh, uh, priorities for all these kinds of traffics and is it going to give the priority uh, to some over the other as like uh, the highest priority. Now this is again a very important consideration. Then the network related information uh, which is the quality of network while a network commits certain quality of service to a user then the quality of network at that run time in terms of the buffer occupancy, the channel impairments, uh, the link losses uh, etc are very important. So uh, in, in all we can say that the link status and the average utilization of the network infrastructure again plays an instrumental role in, take, in helping the RSCF take certain decisions. Now the ITUT actually has come up with some uh, functional requirements um, to be catered for or met through RSCF. Uh, these are very obvious but we need to go through each one of them and if there is a requirement we can deliberate on any. Uh, the first one is the control of QS related functions in transport stratum. Likewise, RSCF is also going to handle uh, the QS related functions in the transport, uh, in, in the service stratum. Support for different types of access and core transport technologies, very important because uh, RSCF has to be aware of the type of network it is connecting to, the technology features which are available through which uh, QS has to be uh, provided. And then support for a variety of customer equipment. Uh, now this customer equipment is something that is a user's choice. It means while not bothering the user to uh, take on with a certain type of device, RSCF has to make sure that the underlying network infra infrastructure complexity remains hidden from the user and still the service pro is offered in the best possible manner. Uh, we already know the arbitration, uh, then there is a need for RSCF to support uh, different kinds of QoS provisioning, for instance absolute QoS control, that is strict QoS control, loose QoS control known as the relative QoS control, differentiation of different QoS parameters uh, including um, the um, bandwidth requirement, um, the buffer allocation, 
uh, link loss, uh, permissibility, uh, prioritization, etc. And then uh, QS signaling has to also be incorporated into RSCF because it is very important to make sure that the signaling traffic is not uh, compromised in any manner. So QS for signaling has to be there as well. Then the uh, most important job for which these companies actually work is the, um, is, the, is the money matter. So the policy and charging control functions also have to be in sync and in coordination with the RSEF. Likewise, uh, RSEF is expected to provide uh, support for uh, unicast, multicast uh, traffic. Uh, usually, uh, broadcasting is something uh, that is so heavy, it has a toll on the network uh, to an extent that um, QoS becomes a non-issue. Uh, the delivery of uh, traffic to the users becomes the primary concern. But uh, broadcasting is something which is uh, uh, very seldom done. So mostly the unicasting and multicasting are the concerns for RSEF. Then if there are multiple operators and each operator has its own service level agreement, then the inter-provider service level agreement mapping has to be done for multiple networks coexisting together for different times of services. For instance, there could be a uh, real-time IPTV or there could be time-shifted TV. Now, what exactly is going to be the shift? When I say time-shifted, it means that it is not live. It is going to have some delay. But the understanding of delay in one NGN implementation by a service provider may be different from the other. So, the RSCF has to take that into consideration as well. Then, when mobility comes into play, RSCF has to interact with the mobility management um, a functional entity, which is again uh, uh, very important. And then uh, QS adaptation that we've already discussed, either uh, downgrading or keeping the QS consistent across different uh, NGNs operating together.